I have this vague memory of having read somewhere that when Mozart presented one of his mature operas, one of the recitatives was encored. And the notion that a, that a recitative might be sufficiently engaging and entertaining and communicative and fun or whatever to warrant an audience wanting it to be encored is to me just the most fantastic goal. The way that um, recitative is generally performed in, uh, in 18th century repertoire in the opera house today is, is really radically different from the way that it would have been expected to be performed back then. And we've been able to reconstruct um, some of those techniques and experiment with our own um, tastes and individual voices, and, and, but bringing our research to bear. The chord playing that you're exploring is, to my knowledge, not explored at all in, in the mainstream. No, it, it's, it's known about by musicologists and it's known about by a, a few colleagues, cellist colleagues, um, some of whom have, have done brilliant and very bold things in this area already. The difficulty that we all face is that it's very hard to put this into context in performance because you need not only to have the expertise and to have the research to back it up to justify what you're doing, but you need to be working with a bunch of colleagues who want you to do it, mm. and specifically with a conductor who's interested. The, the very first treatise written for cello uh, by Corette um, already talks about the use of the, the cello principally as, as an accompanying instrument. The next treatise that appears by Jean Baumgartner, which is um, published in, I think, 1774, it goes into enormous detail about how to accompany generally and specifically how to accompany recitative. He says at the beginning of his treaties um, that he will treat specifically the, the use of the cello as an accompanying instrument because that is what the cello is primarily used for. Mm. And he's true to his word, half the, uh, over half the treaties is devoted to instructions and examples uh, for, for accompanying. And, and of, those, of that half a treaties worth, the majority of that is, is about playing with chords. So at the very opening of this first recitative, um, with the, with the, if I play the note in the position notated, i.e. here, I'm restricted to only one other note. So if we play that chord together, that would sound like this. But in the absence of a keyboard, uh, which was sometimes uh, the case, I, I would have to play on my own either this or this. And what Baumgartner instructs me to do instead is put the bass note down an octave, and that means that I've got three other strings, so I can make a total of four notes. So I can play the whole chord, and I, I can choose which note to put at the top. And what he suggests that I do is, is I look to see which note the singer starts on, A, uh, rising to a D, so that confirms that it's, it is D major chord. And if I want to start um, uh, to finish my first chord with the note that the singer starts, I do this. And then just let my top note decay while the singer starts their first note. So you end up, if you wouldn't mind playing the, playing the mm. vocal line, okay. then uh, we can demonstrate that. It involves a lot of work. So when we rehearsed these recits, and of course being in Latin added to the complexity, we went through a process where, first of all, we talked it through in the Latin to make sure that we were all clear about pronunciation. We would then read it through in a sort of word-for-word -word Latin translation, English translation, so that to check that we all understood the nuances of absolutely what the meaning was. But then the next, and I think the most important step, is to turn it into sort of vernacular, colloquial, 
EastEnders sort of language. So, so we went through a whole process with each recitative of just doing a very sort of modern language, modern English paraphrase, um, which, which basically frees the, the singers up so they don't feel that they're talking about the about to be attacked army or the, the pen of my aunt, but they're actually talking in, in completely in the way they might talk over at a dinner party or in the pub to friends. It's you who are injured by the death of your son. Um, and I'm, I'm afraid of it. Like, he might throw a thunderbolt at my head. And I think that's so important because for me, the whole essence of Restative is it has to galvanise the listener. It has to be interesting. Yes, and because if I take a breath there, I don't need to. It really doesn't quite exactly work the way Italian does. It's slightly more uh, declamatory. Um, the emphases are slightly different, and we really worked through the rehearsal process at trying to um, give a sense uh, of uh, that it's a natural language that we're just communicating naturally, that we're not speaking some Martian, as it were. And I think I think we found a way to uh, to, to to be comfortable with it. <laughs> And, and, and with Mozart operas in particular, the, the recitative is often like a, a game of tennis where somebody is, particularly with the De Ponte operas, but you have this sense of somebody being in control and somebody being sort of throwing up lobs, trying to stay in the rally, and, and the, the balance of power can change in a, you know, very, very quickly. <laughs> What I really hope from from our recordings is that is that they afford us a chance to put what we've experimented with in the studio into practice in the opera house because then mm. I think people really will get to see uh, not just the advantages which hopefully are obvious already from on the recording in terms of the clarity of the harmony and just the color of the harmony the sort of uh, the overall picture that 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 the cello is able to contribute to with its more sort of gently sustained style. Um, now that I'm used to doing it in this way, I now go to the opera house and I think, actually, this really doesn't fly. It, this shouldn't be really uh, an acceptable uh, way of, of performing anymore. <laughs> Tira, 